now. Good morning and welcome to the Eucharist for the Wesley Mission Partnership for this Sunday, the 21st of June. It's very good to be with you this morning and good to be with my, my colleagues, uh, Karen and, and Janet, uh, who are here as well, as you can see. Uh, and we do hope you enjoy your time with us today. Everything you need for the service, you will find on the, uh, on the screen in front of you. Now, before we begin, somebody is going to say, why then have we got an Eastertide greeting? Well, the reason for that is because yesterday I popped over to St. Mary's Church, as I do, for a, a bit of a walk around and make sure that everything is secure. And I sat there in the unlit church and looked and realised that we still had the Lenten hangings and things up from uh, our, our time when we had to leave the church basically, in the middle of March, and nothing has been touched since then. And it made me a little bit sad to think that we didn't get to celebrate Holy Week and Easter uh, together in that way. And of course, we've moved on through Easter tide and went out, out into ordinary time. And at the moment, we really don't know when we will be able to reopen the church for public worship. But the thing is, is that we do so in hope, and we do so in, in faith. And we do so in hope because we are hopeful people as Christians. We believe in the resurrection. We are a resurrection people. And so when I was putting together the liturgy, uh, I thought to myself, I know, we have to be reminded of that Christian hope of the risen Jesus who calls us and sends us out in his name. So that's why the Easter tide greeting is there today. It may not be there next week, but I thought it would be appropriate today just to remind us about who we are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have done evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for today. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us give thanks to the risen Lord. Let us call upon his name. Alleluia. Yeah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? 
yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father and even the hairs of your head are all counted so do not be afraid you are of more value than many sparrows everyone therefore who acknowledges me before others i also will acknowledge before my father in heaven but whoever denies me before others I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father, or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me those who find their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will find it this is the gospel of the lord Praise to, Praise you. to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that's quite a lot to take in, that, that Gospel reading. It seems as if Christ has thrown everything at us, except the kitchen sink. How do we assimilate what we've just heard? Why is he calling us to tell us that, you know, um, we're going to be called for being Christians. We're going to be slandered. Um, we're going to be shunned. We're going to be abused and used. But being a Christian and being called by Christ isn't easy. One of my favorite sayings from De uh, David, and that is in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, when he is offered a full yoke of oxen and a plow, which in those days must have been thousands of pounds as we consider it today. He was offered that as a gift so that David himself could make that a sacrifice to God. And David refused the gift. Instead, he asked to pay for it its full price. And he said to the man that offered it to him, I will not sacrifice that which did not cost me. Being a disciple of Christ costs. It doesn't cost in money as such, although many of us churchgoers who go every week say we make sure that we've got our purses on us because the first thing we're asked for is either to buy something, donate something, or just give it away. And as Christians, I hope we do that with a thankful heart. But the sacrifices Jesus is asking us to make are far deeper than any monetary value. We're asked to sacrifice our reputations. We're asked to sacrifice our time. And in a lot of respects, we're asked to sacrifice as much as our lives. And those six sacrifices are still demanded today. And there are still Christians around the world paying the ultimate sacrifice for Christ. In the persecuted church, they either go to prison or shunned by their own society or even killed for their belief. When Jesus called his disciples to him before he sent them out, he gave them instruction. And he also said to them something that these days is quite controversial. 
The easy bit is a disciple is not above the teacher. But the next sentence is a hard one. Nor a slave above the master. Well, we know at the time of Christ that slavery was a normal everyday thing. Today, slavery is far more a dark and sinister way of life for some people. But Christ goes on to say, it is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. When we are disciples of Christ, we're constantly learning. We're constantly trying to make ourselves much more like Christ. And that is what the discipleship of Christ looks like. We're trying to become like him. But we don't have to strive. We don't have to try and better ourselves. Because Christ says it is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher. We don't have to try and be better than Christ. Christ himself, as Paul wrote about him, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Christ's own sacrifice was the ultimate one. And he sacrificed himself the highest cost to the Father. Today, we do not knock on doors anymore at St. Peter's or St. Paul's or even St. Mary's as far as I know. Our kind of mission these days is done in a, a gentle way, I suppose, when um, in the form of a fundraiser, we put ourselves out there. But that's not enough. Christ expects us to put ourselves out there every day of our lives. And a lot of us, we try to do this, but fail miserably, miserably because of fear. The fear we feel is exactly what Christ said we would have. Ridicule. As much as sometimes from our own families. You know, we could become divided from our own, our own families. I've heard the saying of, of myself, oh, she's gone too deep, she's lost now. Well, yes, I am. I'm lost in the love of God and I am a slave to Christ. And I willingly sacrifice that and I'll pay the cost every day of my life. And that's good enough for God. That's good enough for Christ. I don't have to be a super evangelist to speak the words that Christ spoke to me. When Christ said to his disciples, what you hear in the dark, what I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. My friends, it's simple. He's asking us to share our faith. Sometimes we hear a word from the Holy Spirit when we're deep in prayer in the middle of the night. No one else hears that except us. But it isn't for us to keep. Christ has told us. What I have told you, shout from the rooftops. This faith of ours is a faith to be shared, not kept to ourselves. And if we pay the ultimate price of someone saying, Oh, she's up it. She's gone now. That's it. She's over the top. She's starting to prophesy. Well, that is the word of God. 
Prophecy is the word of God. Each and every one of us, every time we speak about our, our faith and what Christ and God has done for us in our daily lives, we're prophesying for God. We're witnessing to our faith. And then Jesus goes on. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. It has taken me 60 years to learn that I have nothing to fear from other people. But my friends, I will share with you now. It took 24 hours, the last 24 hours, for me to learn that I really truly have nothing to fear. I went into St. Peter's to pick up some uh, paperwork and to check the church was fine, just like Kevin. And I felt suddenly for a moment I wanted to linger and sit. Not because I was in the church, but because I felt I needed to listen. And the quiet helps you to listen. And I felt God say to me, in that quiet time, I gave my son for you. I sacrificed my greatest love for you. And although I've been, as I would comment, a Christian for the past nearly 30 years, that resounded around my heart, my head and my soul. And I realized that I couldn't give anything better than myself as a sacrifice to God. And when Jesus talks about, I do not come in, and I come not to bring peace. And then he goes on to say, for I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own, own household. We all have people in our household who think that we, as Christians, and those who have deep faith, are not really a part of them anymore. We seem to have become their enemies overnight. And yet, we love them more than ever. And then he goes on to say, whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. We all take up the cross. We all sacrifice for God. Every one of you out there who has ever left a husband to go to a church meeting a wife or children to go and man a stall on a, a fair or a, a spring fair, a, a Christmas fair. For those who have left family to go to a service that they did not want to go to. You are worthy to pick up your cross and follow Christ. You haven't turned your back on your family. You've just turned your face to God. And I thank God for all of us. Those of us with faith. Those of us have taken that, that cross and marched with it. And as I've said many times before, there are days when I can't pick the cross up and carry it. So I just drag it behind me. But we all are worthy because Christ makes us good enough. We are the people of God and he made us good enough. Never forget that. Thanks be to God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Janet, very much indeed for those words. 
think it's important to recognize, isn't it, about our utter dependence upon God at times, uh, in, especially in times when we uh, get let down, <laughs> even by our technology. Yes. <laughs> Frustrating, but yes. <laughs> anyway, so my brothers and sisters, I now invite you to profess the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Loving Lord, we come before you in prayer, in us and with us, the needs of the world. We pray for the church locally here in Lee. Empower us to share in your ministry, each one of us offering ourselves, our talents and abilities in your service. We pray too for the church worldwide as it seeks to respond to the changing realities of today's world, whilst at the same time proclaiming what is universal and timeless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for the well being of our nation, for all who are affected by coronavirus, whether through illness, anxiety, isolation, or economically. We pray for medical staff and researchers, for schools and young people and for retail workers, particularly as we begin to emerge from lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world and its peoples, for those facing discrimination and injustice. Forgive our complicities in the structures which oppress. Help us to listen and to learn and to stand in solidarity with those who cry, Black Lives Matter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our town, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust where all are known and cared for. Bless our homes and our families. Each family is made up differently and faces the ups and downs of family life in different ways. Reveal your presence in our relationships and make us sensitive to each other's hopes and needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those troubled in body, mind, or spirit, for those worried about their health or the health of a loved one. And in a moment of silence, we hold those known to us in our hearts, knowing that you, Lord, hold them in yours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have passed through death and are at peace in your nearer presence. We remember those dear ones laid to rest this week and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, O Lord, and if today we might be the means 
by which you answer the prayers of others. May you find us ready to fulfil your purpose. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Remember that we have been made one in Christ, in faith and hope and love. We're drawn together by the power of the Spirit of God. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And also with you. Uh, we shall now do the time-honoured uh, method of sharing the peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think it'll catch on? Maybe. <laughs> So we, uh, we take bread and wine as we place these gifts upon the altar, Lord. We pray your blessing. Lord Jesus Christ, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. We come to the prayer of thanksgiving, the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works, for by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored the power uh, conquered the power of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He's placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so the joy of this, our Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy. holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this. All of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. 
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, thank you for joining us for this service today and hope that you can join us for all the different things we're doing throughout the week. Uh, of course, our 10 o'clock um, service every Sunday. Every day we have uh, midday prayer during the day and um, in the evening on my own page, uh, I have Compline at 10 p.m. And on um, Thursday evenings, it's uh, some study and chat and uh, we hope you can join us at uh, half seven on Thursday evenings. Loads more details about that be found on our, uh, on our various pages and things, so keep an eye out for those. Stay safe, stay well, and um, with the change of weather, stay warm too. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.